it's time to focus on encrypting your passwords. Now, what I'm talking about is when you go back to database, of course, we do have now users in the, in the database. Uh, in fact, we have added few users, right? And if I want to show you the users, if I say select star from users here in the database, and if I hit the query, these are our users. The problem here is I can see the passwords, okay? Imagine you are running some huge applications, a critical application, and then uh, you open your database and you can see the user's password. And most of us use the same password on multiple platform. Not a good idea, okay, never do that, but yeah, people do that, right? So they have the same password on multiple platform. So that's how you get hacked, right? Uh, I mean, not just one thing where uh, if I have the, if I'm a database administrator, if I can see the passwords, that's one risk. But what if you are using certain application and then most of the application which are using are safe, this particular application is not safe and uh, someone was able to hack it, they got your password and then they're using these passwords everywhere. So again, don't do that. Don't use the same password everywhere. But again, the problem here is we are not encrypting the password. You can still say it. So what's the ideal way here? What I can think about is, uh, let me just go back to my ID and let's use some area to type what I'm, what I'm talking about. Uh, uh, okay, which is empty file. So this, is, this looks like empty file, right? So I will just use this area. So what we can do is we can take a plain text from the user. Okay, so user will say n at rate one, two, three. And before I store that in database, what I can do is I can simply encrypt it. Right, so we can get a cipher format. So we got a cipher text in the database. If a user is trying to basically verify, you can convert that cipher text into plain text and then you can verify, right? That's one way. But the problem is when you talk about encryption, like cryptography, we use a key there, right? And using a key, you can basically do this encryption and decryption. But the problem is what if the key gets leaked? And of course, for all the users, you'll be using the same key. If one password is compromised and if someone got the key, they can basically get all the passwords. Uh, we don't want that, right? So instead of creating a cipher text, what if you can create a hash of it? Now, what is hashing? So basically hashing is one way. So if you get a plain text, you run some algorithm on it, let's say SHA uh, or MD5, and then you find a hash. Hash is like a fingerprint for a text. Uh, for me, this is, this is my fingerprint. And imagine if I change any part of my body, let's say if I remove the specs, the fingerprint, fingerprint should change. That's how basically hashing works. Uh, and you can't get back. So from the fingerprint, you can't get the person, but from a person, you can get the fingerprint. That's how hashing works. So from the plain text, you can get the hash, but from the hash, you can't get the plain text. And we, we can use different algorithms to achieve that. One of the algorithm is SHA-256, but you can do that only once, right? You can run, you can run one round. But what if you can do multiple times? Same thing, you know, uh, get the plain text, run the algorithm, get the hash, run the algorithm on the hash, and again, you will get a new hash. So let's say this is hash one. Again, you run the algorithm, you got hash two and multiple times. How many times? Maybe 10, 15, 20, 100, millions. So if you do it more, and if, if it takes some time for the computation, of course you can secure it. And to achieve that, we are going to use something called Bcrypt. Okay, so let's head back to the browser. And here I want to search for a Bcrypt generate password. There are different websites we can go through. Uh, one of the thing which I use is sometimes I use Bcrypt online or browser link. So let me go to browser link, or how do you pronounce it? Browser link, browser link, doesn't matter. So here we got this Bcrypt password generator. So basically it finds the hash and you can do multiple rounds for it. Okay, so let me let me just enter the password. So let's say if I say n at the rate one, two, three, and if I click on Bcrypt, you can see it's generating a password for you. So basically not a password, but the hash value of it. And this is the hash value. So from the password or from the text, you can get the uh, hash value, but not other way around. So you can't basically get uh, the, the text from the hash. And you can see it is, uh, World simplest online Bcrypt hasher. Okay, I'm not sponsored by this link. I hope they will soon. But yeah, we got this. We got this thing here. But if you observe, we have one more thing, which is rounds. As I mentioned before, you can talk about the rounds, right? One round, two rounds. So it says ten. Is it, it does it mean ten rounds? No, it's actually two the power of ten rounds. You can imagine how big the number is. And we can also go for twelve rounds, and we are going to use twelve rounds. And if you see, when I change that number, observe this, with, with 10 rounds, it gives you this text. Uh, this is a type of Bcrypt. So there are different types we can use 
or different versions we can use. This is 2a, there's also 2y, uh, the different versions. And this 10 here means the rounds. So if I say 12 now, if I could click on Bcrypt, you will get a different number. So you can see we got 12 here and the hash also changes. So the bigger the number, it is difficult to crack. But again, by doing this, you might be thinking, what if I say 100? And I want to make it more secure. You can do that. You can click on Bcrypt and okay, it's, it exceeds the limit. But let's say if you give a bigger number and uh, you have no idea, okay, it's still calculating. That's the problem, you can see. I clicked on Bcrypt, it is still calculating it. Imagine you are using this on your server and every time a user login, you will run all this number of rounds on your server. Imagine the bill as well. If you're using Amazon, imagine for even verifying a user, you will, they, will pay, they will charge you a lot. And that's why that is not a good number and still it, it's still not going ahead. Maybe I can go with 15 if that works and uh, I hope it will come back. Gone, gone. We just will try with, again, some text here. Round, let's say 15. So the higher the number, it will take more time. You can see it is still calculating. Uh, so better, 10, 12 works. And we are going to use 12. Again, I'm, oh, we got 15. So yeah, it takes time. So don't go for the a bigger number, 12 works. And I will stick to 12, click on big rip, and this is the thing. Okay, now once we understood this, now what we have to do is we have to implement this in our project so that every time a user is logged in or every time a user creates an account, at that time when you ask for the password, don't store the plain text. So that means we have to do two things. One, we have to implement Bcrypt when a user register and we have to implement Bcrypt when also we are validating it. So let's do for the registration. And as you can see in the project, we have not done the registration part yet. In the earlier video, we had the user in the database, right? So we went for some SQL query and where's our PG admin? It's here, let me make it full screen, browser full screen. Yeah, so we already have these values, but now I want to create a new user. So what I will do is I will go back here uh, to the code and let's create a controller for this. So for the creation, we'll create a Java class and we'll say user controller. And in this basically, first of all, we have to make this as a REST controller. That's the first thing. And next, I want to reg register a user. So I will say public, I want to return the user. And the class we're using is users, not user. And we have to import the package for this. Again, the reason I'm using users, not user, user makes sense, but then if you say user, it's an inbuilt class inside uh, Spring Security. So sometime you will import some wrong package and it will give you errors. And that's why on the safer side, I'm going with users. Normally we use user. And I will say, register and while you're registering it of course you will receive the data from a client so i will say request body and users user and we have to also pass the post mapping because we are submitting data from the client and this will be double quote slash register okay now here basically the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to return the user itself as it is but don't you think i want to store this in database that's our aim okay so to do that i will need a service layer so i'll go back to my service and here i will create a new class a user service class i will say users oh do we have user service no we don't user service and the job of user service is just to accept that particular request right and it will return the users and I will say uh, save user, or maybe we can say register itself, register. And this will basically take the object of users, user. And who will store this in database? Of course, service is accepting it. And I forgot to write service, yeah. So service is accept accepting it from the controller, but service will say, that's not my job. If you want to store something in database, send it to database. And to do that, we are going to use the repository layer, right? And that's, we already have it here user repo. So I can simply use user repo in my service and I will close certain things here, which we don't need at this point. Home controller not required, uh, user principle not required, my digital service not required, student controller we don't require. Okay, so let's head back to the service and let's create the reference for the user repo. So user repo repo and on top of this I will say auto wire so that I don't have to create the object and here I will simply say repo dot I want to save so you can simply say save and pass the user this will save this data in database okay and also return the user in fact I will return the user which we are storing in database not what we got okay so I'm returning the user here and also I'm going to uh, user controller Okay, we need service here. So I delete auto wired, private user service, user, okay, I will say service. 
And here I'm going to basically say return service dot register user. So we got the request on the controller, controller sending to service, service sending to database, and we are done. Again, till this point, we have not talked about Bcrypt. We are just storing the user in the database as it is. Okay, so by doing this, let's restart the application and see what can go wrong. Okay, server started, I will use my postman. Okay, and let's send get student. Let's see if this is working first. And yeah, so this is working authorization is this. Now I want to create a new user, right? So I will say post and I will send the request for register, but we have to pass the body as well, right? Now in the body, of course, I don't want to pass the product. What I want to pass is the ID. I want to pass the username. Now from where you will get this field? Now this is depend upon what you have used here. So this is the type of users. And if you go to users, these are the three fields you have to pass. ID, username, and password. So let's get back ID, username, and password. The value is three here because we already have one and two. Uh, the username I want to go for this time is, let's say, okay, what user we don't have. Let's verify from database. We got Naveen and Sushil. Let's go for hush. And the password is h at the rate 123. Okay, so let's click on send. It should work. You can see we got the user back from the uh, database. And the best way to verify is actually hitting database, right? So I will just run this. And yeah, we got new user. Again, no Bcrypt implemented. Now let's implement Bcrypt. What I want to do is I want to create this new user, but then the data which you are storing in database should be with a new, uh, with a Bcrypt. So what we can do is here, before you send the user to database in the service layer, what you can do is you can change the password. So you can say user.set password, but how will I know what is the Bcrypt version of that password? Maybe you can just get the password here, go to that website, uh, copy that, uh, I mean, what I'm talking about is take the password, type it here, copy this and paste it there. Again, we don't want to do manual process. So in that case, we have to use a library, the Bcrypt library. And the good thing is in Spring Security, you will get Bcrypt by default. You just have to use the object. So I will just create the object here. There are two ways of creating the object. You can use the bin in the security config file or in the configuration, or I can just hard code the value or I can just create the object by myself. So I will say bcrypt password encoder. And you can see this is a part of Spring Security. So Spring Framework dot security. So we are happy. At least we are not using some third party which is which will give you some errors. So we got uh, encoder and we can say new bcrypt password encoder. Now in this bracket, basically for the constructor of uh, bcrypt uh, password encoder, we can pass this strength. What is this strength? The rounds, 10 rounds, 12 rounds. By default it will be 10 if I'm not wrong. Uh, they don't have the documentation. Let's download the source. Let's see. So strength is by default. Okay, they don't have a default strength, is it? Okay, by default is minus one. This is weird. Uh, if you pass something, okay, they've not mentioned the strength. So log rounds to use uh, between four to 31. So we can use between these numbers. Uh, next, we can also mention the version. So uh, with the strength, you can also mention the number or version, like we can have 2A, 2B, 2Y. We'll stick to the basic version or whatever it passes. Let's go back to the user. And here I will just mention 12. We are not going for 10 now. We are going for 12. Strength is 12. So using this encoder, I can simply say set password, encoder dot encode, that's the method, and pass the password. But how will I know the password? Actually, we know. In the user object, we are already getting the password, right? So get the password, encode it, set it in the user, uh, set it to the to the user. And it will do your work. Okay, so I mean I am hoping this will work. Let's try. So let's restart the application. Now go back to register. Of course, I will use the same uh, username password for the authorization. In the body, I will create a new user now. So I will say four. Uh, this time it is Auni and A at the rate one, two, three. Let's see if this works. Send. It worked. We got 200 OK. And we also got a password. Can you see that? We got a bigly password. We can also verify that in the data database. So let's head back to database. Let's hit the query and this is your new password. But we got another big problem now. Let's try to do something. So let's say I want to fetch all the students. I'm just trying to access some resource. And in the authorization, Naveen will work. So if I say run, it works. But let's say I'm trying to use a new user, which is Auni A at the rate one, two, three. If I click on send, we got authorization fail. Why? This is the right password. It's just that when you are storing the, uh, when you are creating a new user, you are converting into Bcrypt, right? The hash, 
But when you're validating it, we are not doing that. Because in the validation, if you go back to your uh, security config, this file, we have written one line here, which is this line. Can you see that? We are saying that when you're verifying it, still use no op password encoder. That means we are using a default one, not the bcrypt. So yeah, for storing, we are using it, but for verifying, we are not using it. So how do I verify? So we have to convert this. Of course, if I want, I can go to database and copy this string. I'm just hoping this will work. Never tried it. Yeah, it works in that way. But do you think user will enter this? Of course, they want to enter their normal passwords. You can't expect them to remember the hash values. And again, it's not safe uh, to transfer this on the internet. So what can we do? Of course, while verifying it, instead of using no password, use Bcrypt. How difficult that can be? Maybe creating some classes and objects? No, just one line. What you can do is just create the new object of Bcrypt password encoder and pass this strength. That's it. You just mentioned that we are saying that, hey, authentication provider, the password encoder you have to use is Bcrypt and this strength is 12. That's it. Now it knows, okay, whatever password I will receive, I will convert that into Bcrypt hash and now I will verify it. And by doing so, let's run this and let's see if this works. So go back to the postman. Let's use the hash and hash will not work now. Yeah, you can see we got 401. But now let's use a normal password. It's A at the rate 1, 2, 3. Send. It worked. What about the normal users? Naveen. I mean, normal users means the uh, user with the plain text. Even for them, it will not work. In that case, you have to basically uh, ask them to update their passwords. Maybe, you know, sometimes you receive a link from some uh, applications or some service by saying, hey, it's time to change your password. Maybe, they you know, they mess up sometimes and they ask you to change the password. I mean, I doubt. Anyway, so one thing you can do is, uh, if you want to change the new password, if you want this to work, you can create a bigger version of this and copy this. Again, not a good idea. I'm just showing you what you can do. And here, you can just update Naveen. So you can say, first of all, ID of Naveen is what? It's uh, one. So I will say update users set the password. I don't know why I'm feeling that I'm doing a crime here where uh, the ID is equal to three. Oh, sorry, ID is equal to one. Just hit this query, run, uh, got updated and run. So you can see for Naveen also, uh, we got the encrypted password or the hashing password. And now I can verify this and this should work. So make sure that all your passwords are encrypted and who is not safe? It's Sushil and Harsh. Okay, it's time to send them a link by saying update your passwords. So anyway, uh, we have talked about Bcrypt and now we know why encoding your password is important and how do we do that. So we can use Bcrypt. It's not the only solution. We have other solutions as well. And if you tried something, let me know in the comments and uh, others will also try. So that's it from this video. I hope you enjoyed how do we use Bcrypt, how do we do hashing, and I hope you are enjoying whatever we are doing now. Uh, there are some other topics which is coming up and maybe we'll do that after a small break. Let's see how the time goes. So yeah, officially we have done with the part of Spring Security where you can use a username, we can use a password and things are working out. There's another way which is JWT, uh, which we'll see later. But even, for, even if you're securing your application, this solution works. JWT is a different ballgame altogether. So that's it from this video. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.